Hey everybody, we're going to talk about lesson number 14, isotopes and decay. Now the big idea in this is that isotopes are elements that have different numbers of neutrons, but same number of protons. We're going to get back into that in a bit. But first of all, we're going to talk about radioactivity. What is radioactivity? Well, radioactivity, you might learn a lot of times from movies or TV shows, it is the release of high energy particles or rays of energy from a substance due to the change in its nuclei. Okay, so, a lot of times we have a lot of usage for them, so we see that a lot of times it's for power, so nuclear power plants, we have it in medicine for example, we have a lot of, of this, but this also happens naturally, because there are what we call natural background. radiation. So what is natural background radiation? Well, you might remember back in Science 8 or Science 9, you learn about visible light. Now visible light is just a tiny section of what we call the electromagnetic radiation. So what is radiation? Well, it's just high energy rays and particles emitted by a radioactive source. So this can be, for example, it could be radio waves, it could be microwaves, it could be infrared, it could be visible light, ultraviolet x-rays and gamma rays. As you see, you have radio waves, which are long waves. They are long. They, and because they're longer, they can go through objects. They can travel long distances. Then we have microwaves, and we have infrared, which you might know as the heat. We have visible light, which takes up a little tiny section of this, um, this uh, 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 electromagnetic radiation um, line. Now, you might notice that 700 nanometers wavelength is red. 400 nanometers is violet, and this is your uh, spectrum. Ultraviolet is what you'll know will cause sunburns. X-rays is what you use to see through objects, and then there's gamma rays, which are really high energy waves. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the energy. The higher, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. But we're going to talk about isotopes. What are isotopes? Isotopes are well, first of all, we know that, for example, if you change the number of protons, you change the element. Because, based on the periodic table, each element has a different number of protons. So lithium is, has three protons because it has an atomic number of three. Oxygen has eight protons because it has an eight atomic number. Iron has 26 protons. So thus, when we change the number of protons, we change the element. If we change the number of electrons, we call those ions because they give the the um, the atom its charge. It turns into an ion. Then what is an isotope? An isotope is where it's an atom with different numbers of neutrons. So that means now you can change the number of neutrons. So in this case, it's still the same number of protons and electrons as the standard atom, but now the number of neutrons change. When because the neutrons change, the atomic mass changes with it. Because we remember 
that the atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So this is because atomic mass equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. That means if we want to solve for the number of neutrons, we could rearrange the equation to solve because the number of neutrons is equal to the atomic mass take away the number of protons, which is your atomic number. So if I put this in brackets, it's atomic number. So how do we represent isotopes? Well, we represent isotope in a way we call the standard atomic notation, which means that we write the chemical uh, symbol or its name, but instead of putting anything, we put the mass of this chemical at the end. Because the, to the atomic number won't change for this chemical, only its mass. So if we look at, for example, this example with potassium. We see that we have potassium 39, we see we have potassium 40, and we see we have potassium 41. Well, potassium has 19 protons no matter what, so that doesn't ever change. And because it's an atom, the number of electrons never ever changes. But what change? It's the number of neutrons. Because in this case, the first one, potassium 39, has a mass of 39. It has the number of protons of 19. Thus, it has 20 neutrons. Potassium 40 has 21 neutrons. And potassium 41 has 22 protons, uh, uh, neutrons. So how do we write the standard atomic notation then? Well, we put potassium symbol as K. And we put its mass in the top left corner. So that's potassium 39. This is potassium 40. And this is potassium 41. So this is the way we use to represent our chemicals as different isotopes. Now some people would show this also with its atomic number at the bottom as well, which is also, in this case, its number 19. So you can also write this down, because when we get to radioactive decay, we'll need to know what the atomic number is as well. Now where do we see isotopes? Because isotopes, are they just some rare occurrence that happens in nuclear power plants? And the thing is, some are natural. So some isotopes, actually, let's change it. Most isotopes are natural. But usually the most common will exist the most in nature. For example, let's look at carbon. So carbon is made up of three types of isotopes. We have carbon-12, which makes up approximately 99% of all carbon atoms. We also have carbon-13, which makes up approximately the other 1% or so. But we also have carbon-14, and this is the radioactive carbon, and this is just going to be a trace amount. It's a tiny little amount. And we're going to use the idea of carbon-14 to calculate the age of certain things when we get to half-life. So what is the last thing we're talking about today? What is radioactive decay? Well, radioactive, radioactive decay is when an atom emits radiation. Well, when it does this, it loses energy, but it also 
loses mass. And because it loses mass, this usually leads to it turning into, turns into a different element. Now why does this occur? It occurs because we have an unstable nuclei. And this nuclei can become stable when it decays. So it can become stable as it decays. And we call these nuclei these isotopes that decay, we call them radial isotopes. Because we're going to learn a phrase, we're going to have parent isotopes and daughter isotopes when we get to decay. So that's the end of our isotope decay lesson. As always, make sure you stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.